The Ukrainian general staff has deployed its best and best equipped brigades in the Kursk region. This contrasts with the use of weak and exhausted brigades that are constantly forced to retreat in the Don base, writes the Spanish newspaper El Pais. In Sumy region, there is such intense artillery fire, aircraft flights and armored vehicle movement that it is strange compared to Ukraine's weak position in the hot spots of Donbass. The military interviewed in late October in this region insist that if they need anything, it is more weapons. They are clearly better in numbers than their brigades, which are retreating in the south of Donetsk region, the publication says. No one complains about the lack of soldiers in the Kursk operation, the rotation of fighters occurs every 10 days, and in the beginning it was even every three days, says a Ukrainian fighter. At the same time in Donbass, in particular in the Kurakovo region, the average time spent by infantry on the front line is 25 days, representatives of four different brigades told the newspaper. In the battles in Kursk region, Ukrainian troops even go on the offensive and sometimes make new territorial gains, which is unthinkable on the front inside Ukraine, the authors of the publication add. It is in Kursk that mechanized and armored regiments equipped with Western equipment are fighting. Thus, the 47th Mechanized Brigade, which is fully equipped with NATO weapons and has well-trained personnel, is fighting here on American Abrams tanks and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, which directly attack Russian positions. The invasion of the Kursk region is a personal bet for President Volodymyr Zelensky, and not only his political fate, but also the fate of the country depends on the success of the operation. Demonstrating to Russia that it is vulnerable and that its territory is also under threat is one of the five points of the victory plan, El Pace notes. At the same time, the newspaper notes that not everyone in Ukraine understands the need to conduct the Kursk operation at a time when Ukrainian troops are forced to retreat in Donbass. Perhaps our leaders have some big secret plan, otherwise I don't understand why our best brigades are in Kursk region, while our defense in Ukraine is falling apart, the newspaper quotes Ukrainian General Dmitry Marchenko, who recently announced his dismissal from the army. In a recent broadcast, Vladimir Solovyov, a Russian state TV host and known ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, called for the destruction of America's critical infrastructure if the United States tries to give Moscow any kind of an ultimatum in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. According to Newsweek, President-elect Donald Trump has previously said that if he were at the negotiating table with Putin and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, the war between the two Eastern European nations would end within 24 hours. Now that Trump won this year's presidential election against Vice President Kamala Harris, the Democratic nominee, the world will be looking to see how he handles the war. Solovyov warned on a program he hosts on Russia One, a Russian state-owned television channel, if the US tries to give us any kind of an ultimatum. The Stalin Strait will appear in the middle of America. I will say it once again, we should destroy every dam, every hydro system, Solovyov said on his show. He then said of Ukraine, we should wash this Nazi scum off the face of the Russian soil, adding that the Warsaw nation simply doesn't exist. Newsweek recalls when Putin launched his full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, he claimed it was to denazify the country. However, Ukraine, the US and multiple experts on the region have denied Moscow's claim that the war-torn country, whose president is Jewish, is corrupted by Nazis. Solovyov seemingly implied during a broadcast in February 2023 that the US should be destroyed for its support of Ukraine and in its place should be a strait named after former Soviet Union leader Joseph Stalin. 
After a guest on the show spoke of the war in Ukraine being a larger battle against the US and the West, Solovyov agreed, and in the 21st century, the dream of the great thinker, academician Sakharov, will come true, Solovyov said, likely referring to Andrei Sakharov, a Russian scientist who played a role in creating the first Soviet hydrogen bomb. Yes, and on the territory of the United States, there will be a strait in the name of comrade Stalin, Solovyov added. The Telegram channel Gostri Kartuzi published a video showing the liquidation of a North Korean soldier in the near rear zone of Russian troops at a distance of about 5 kilometers from the front near Selidovo. Experts, having analyzed the face of the deceased in detail, determined that he was a representative of Korean nationality. Military expert Alexander Kovalenko explained that the physiognomic features of North Koreans formed against the background of chronic malnutrition and vitamin deficiency indicate that the liquidated fighter came from North Korea. The video also shows that the deceased was carrying a large load, the volume of which is comparable to his build. This suggests that the Russians may be using North Koreans as labor to transport ammunition and provisions to the front lines. As Kovalenko notes, such a practice is common among Russian troops since the use of equipment in the frontline zone is difficult due to the systematic destruction of vehicles by Ukrainian drones. Thus, the delivery of goods is carried out by foot porters who carry supplies on their backs. The expert added that the use of North Koreans as labor in the war zone raises questions and suggested waiting for official confirmation before drawing final conclusions. Putin's forces are believed to be losing hundreds of troops a day, with Ukrainian estimates going as high as 1,200 to 1,500, so the more than 10,000 troops South Korea believes are in Russia. In the big picture, even 12,000 soldiers don't affect the general situation of the war significantly, says Emil Kastelmi, who runs the Blackbird Group, which tracks the war in Ukraine. The troops are already under fire, being shelled in the Russian border region of Kursk, according to Kyiv. This is the area where Ukrainian troops have held territory, having started a daring raid in August. Questions have been raised about the caliber of the North Korean troops, not least because none of the group, which includes 500 officers and three generals, have any combat experience. North Korea's isolation on the international stage means that its troops, which number more than a million, have faced nothing but training. None would think they are going to Russia to die. Choi Jung-hoon, a former first lieutenant in North Korea's army, told the Associated Press, but I think they're cannon fodder because they will be sent to the most dangerous sites and will surely be killed.